That was a good thing. All I did was work. This isn't my kind of crap. Good evening, members of council, staff, ladies and gentlemen. I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting for the town of Pelham Council for Tuesday, February 19th to order. We will begin with an invocation led by Councillor Durley, followed by the singing of the national anthem led by Councillor Papp. All rise. Dear God, who is so great, and has given us grace to make our common goals unto thee, and who does promise that when two or more of us who are so small are gathered unto thy name, you will grant their requests. Lord, we supplicate your blessing upon this assembly. Fulfill now, O Lord, the petitions of thy servants as may be expected of them. Grant all in this council chambers the knowledge of trust, justice, and honor in all considerations placed before them. Provide us in this chamber, O Lord, strong, open minds, discerning spirit, as we deliberate over the business of our town, that we move forever forward to ensure the town of Pelham continues to be a vibrant, caring, and creative community. May God bless all in this community and grant us in this chamber the wisdom, the will, the generosity, and the good conscience to guide the town through the challenges and successes that lie ahead. Amen. Amen. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patron all, in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, counselors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all. First on the agenda is the approval of the, ag the agenda. It has been moved by Council Ribiak, seconded by Council Durley, that the agenda for the February 19th, 2013 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Are there any changes to that agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Do any members of Council have any pecuniary interest they need to disclose? Can that be noted in the minutes that there are none? Next on the agenda are presentations, and the first is uh, the Fire Department Service Awards. Very pleased that uh, we, we continue to do this and recognize uh, the great service and dedication of our firefighters. So I'm going to join the chief. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause.
Second firefighter uh, for 20 year of service, firefighter Ryan Gilbert. service for your uh, for being there when we need you and we know that you train extensively and uh, leadership within the company is extremely uh, extremely appreciated so on behalf of council I want to thank you for your commitment for your dedication and for your ongoing service to our town thank you again Terry, good Terry. Golf and lost a lot of golf balls. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, uh, members as well, for your ongoing support. Next, we have delegations. We have uh, two delegations on the agenda this evening, and they are relating to the same topic. The first is uh, John and Donna Shell regarding the traffic signals at Pelham Street and Pancake Lane. Thank you for joining us this evening, and if you'd like to join us here at the lectern, you can sit or stand, whichever is your preference. Well, easier to stand. There is no chair. Oh, okay. Well, there is. The, somebody must have taken it because we have a full house this evening. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Councillors, and staff. My name is Donna Shell, and I would like to address the issue of traffic light installation on Pelham Street. Hard-earned taxpayer monies need to be spent responsibly based on current and future needs and not on wants and wish lists. The goal of any change should be to economically meet the needs of the community as a whole while not negatively and directly impacting those in the, e in the immediate areas affected with unjust consequences that will compromise their daily safety while engaging in everyday activities, especially when a more viable and safer alternative is available. Residents have the right to be safe when exiting and entering their driveway, gardening at boundary property, and while maintaining town properties. We have lived at the same location for 35 years and feel that our observations, knowledge of traffic patterns, and experiences regarding the intersection of Pancake Lane, John Street, and Pelham Street are relevant and noteworthy of consideration before a decision is made. We recommend the installation of traffic lights at Spruceside Crescent North, Bacon Lane, and Pelham Street intersection. 
along with a speed reduction to 50 kilometers per hour. The reasons are as follows. Number one, traffic light at Spruceside North and Bacon Lane will serve the dual purpose of providing traffic control as well as a safe pedestrian crossing in a high density population area with a busy intersection that has significant future growth as well as enabling town to become a more walkable community while economically meeting current and future needs. Point two, this is the only intersection on Pelham Street in which both the east and west streets have sidewalks. Thirdly, from just north of Merritt Road to Quaker Road, there are no driveways on the west side of Pelham Street. Point four, the traffic count. The traffic count was carried out on December 6th, 11th, and 19th in 2012. The traffic count results show the data was compiled not on any one particular day at all the locations, but rather on three different days over a 13-day interval. For example, Pancake Lane and John Street was done on December 6th, yet Pelham Street north of this intersection was December 19th. Merritt Road and Pelham Street north of Merritt both were done on December 6th. Spruceside Crescent North, December 6th. Bacon Lane, December 11th, and Pelham Street north of this intersection, December 19th. Spruceside Crescent South was December, 16th, December 6th, and Pelham Street South, December 11th. In order to have accurate data, it would be important to collect all the data at all the points on the same date and not over a 13-day time span. There is no data available as to the number of left-hand turns onto Pelham Street at either intersection. Nor is there data available to the peak usage times. The inaccurate data shows that the difference between Spruceside Crescent North, Bacon Lane and Merritt Road combined is not <coughs> significantly different than the count at Pancake Lane. Point five, the attached Steve Bauer Trails Network map is a visual aid concisely showing the needs and benefits of a traffic light for the residents in lot 177 and Spruceside subdivision. There are no trail links from the Spruceside subdivision to the Steve Bauer Trail on Line Avenue and a traffic light would allow a safe pedestrian crossing to Bacon Lane which has a sidewalk and directly leads to the trail. The Woodstream subdivision has a sidewalk off of Greenville Court, which connects directly to Spruceside Crescent North at Falling Brook Drive, conveniently close to the proposed traffic light. Residents on the east side of Pelham Street in Lot 177 and those in the Timber Creek subdivision will have a safe crossing readily available to them so that families can go and enjoy numerous recreation facilities in the Woodstream and Spruceside subdivisions that are not available that are not available in their area, such as parks and the arena. If you refer to your map, it would be circle loop number two, that's the blue path. Point six, topography. The flat roads, both on Spruce Side and Bacon Lane, allow for more vehicle control, even in adverse weather conditions. Unlike that on Pancake Lane, where the downward steepness of the street naturally increases vehicular speed. The upward slope of John Street makes it particularly hard to navigate in adverse weather conditions. Point seven, the driveways on Spruceside, Bacon Lane and Pelham Street in this area are flat surfaces, thus presenting no extra challenges, especially during adverse weather conditions when entering and especially when exiting their driveway. Point eight, geographically, Spruceside at Bacon is almost the midpoint between Quaker Road and Port Robinson Road, thereby optimizing traffic streaming while maintaining the synchronization of lights. Point nine, future development will be occurring in areas east of Pelham Street, namely Lot 177, the East Font Hill expansion, and the Kunda subdivision expansion, which will significantly increase traffic flow at Spruce Side and Bacon Lane, and at Merritt Road, 
which is a connector or feeder road. Point 10, there are overflow parking problems at Peddler's Funeral Home in cars on both shoulders, in cars park on both shoulders of Palm Street right up to the Pancake intersection, thereby causing congestion. Installation of a traffic light at this intersection would not aid in the resolution of this problem, but rather compound it. This is unsafe for both traffic and pedestrians. The businesses located at the Woodgate Plaza do not have overflow parking problems, and as such, Spruceside and Bacon is a safer intersection for both traffic and pedestrians. Point 11. Personal safety of the residents at the southeast corner of Pelham and John Street would be greatly compromised. Our driveway entry and exit would be blocked even by one car at the potential traffic light. Entry blockage would result in backlog traffic problems on Pelham Street North. Our driveway is also sloped and exit during adverse weather conditions presents an extra challenge as we need momentum to get out. And the effect is compounded when vehicles are continuously blocking the exit. Shoveling the town portion of the driveway becomes more hazardous. While maintaining the approximately 150 foot town boulevard, cutting grass two times a week and more frequent in the fall with the leaf cleanup on Pelham Street and approximately 310 feet of town boulevard on John Street, personal safety is again compromised. In order not to blow grass clippings onto the roadway, which is illegal, the person has to have their back to the flow of traffic and thus not be able to see oncoming traffic and remove themselves from what they may observe as a personally detrimental situation. <clears throat> traffic light installation at this intersection will increase the use of the shoulder at a greater distance from the light and at a greater speed in order to make it through the light. While working on maintaining our approximately 130 foot hedge, our back is always to the road as that is the only way it can be cut. The same situation applies on John Street while maintaining our spruce trees. Our safety or lack thereof in both scenarios is dependent upon the vehicles driving by. This is hardly fair. In the past, a stopped vehicle at Pancake Lane was hit from behind by a speeding vehicle during dry summer road conditions and was thus thrust into the intersection, thereupon being hit by a southbound vehicle on Pelham Street and ending up at our hedge right at the John Street corner of our property. The driver died at the scene. This is an image that will never be forgotten. Increased speed on Pancake Lane to run the light will definitely increase the possibility of collisions and potentially make this a high collision intersection, which it never has been, nor is now. Point 12, there have only been four accidents at this intersection in the 35 years that we are aware of. That's extremely low. Point 13, as no presentation is being made by the residents from the Spruce Side Bacon Lane area, it is indicative of the fact that there is no opposition to the traffic light being installed in that area. Point 14, with regards to the data gathered by the PATC, Pelham Active Transportation Committee, it is limited and outdated, four to five years old and potentially included non-residents and reflects past needs and wants. <coughs> Demographics change with time, and current data is needed to address current and future needs. Thank you for allowing me to make this presentation. Thank you very much for your presentation, and I wonder if members of council have questions for you, if you're amenable to that. Uh, so do members of council have questions for you at this time? It was a very comprehensive presentation. Councillor Ribiak. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me, let me thank you for that very very comprehensive presentation that covered an awful lot of territory. I just want some clarification with respect to one point that you mentioned. I think you have a concern, do you not, that if a stoplight is put at that corner, it will be misused and that you have concerns about your safety or the safety of persons in the immediate area as a result of the misuse of a traffic light? Yes, because I do feel that the traffic speed will increase so they can get through the yellow because who wants to wait through another whole set of lights and the traffic will definitely increase along the shoulder at a greater distance from the intersection than they normally would because if you have a backup of three or four cars waiting to make a left-hand turn onto uh, Pancake Lane 
well, you're just going to have to use that shoulder just that much earlier. If there was no traffic light and traffic is flowing smoothly as it currently does, you don't have that backlog. And so if you're going to use the shoulder, perhaps it's used only for a car, two cars. Otherwise, you're just uh, building the number of cars waiting at the light. And impatient people will use that shoulder. Again, just for clarification, so your concern about safety in that regard would be lessened if you had confidence that people used traffic lights properly. I think the situation as it stands now presents the safest scenario for us. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Other questions? There being none, thank you very much for your presentation. Again, very comprehensive, and, and thank you for the maps uh, outlining it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We do have another presentation regarding the same topic as I outlined, and this is uh, David Swan from the Pelham Active Transportation Committee. Mr. Swan, thank you for joining us this evening. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I do have a motion to receive. So, Mr. Swan, if you can just hold, just stay there for a second. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the information submitted by the delegation, John and Donna Shell, regarding the proposed traffic signals at Pelham Street and Pancake Lane be received. Any discussion? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Mr. Swan. Chair, I'll be as brief as I can tonight. I see you have quite an agenda. Uh, my submission will be uh, very brief, but to the point. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the Pelham Town Council, uh, my name is David Swan. As a member of the Pelham Active Transportation Committee, I will be speaking on behalf of that committee tonight. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you regarding the issue of the need for a traffic signal at the intersection of Pancake Lane and Pelham Street located in the town of Fawn Hill. Since the year uh, 2009, the Pelham Active Transportation Committee has conducted several information sessions throughout our community. The sessions held at the Pelham uh, Farmers Market, the walkability checklist completed by our residents and compiled by the region, and the surveys conducted by the Glen A. Green Parent Association has indicated that the residents and parents of school-aged children want safe signalized crossings along Pelham Street. The PATC incorporated this request into our top 10 list of items that would make Pelham a safer and a more walkable community. Recently, a traffic study was carried out at two intersections along Pelham Street the intersections of Pelham Street and Pancake Lane had the highest traffic counts in the area. The data gathered from the information <coughs> sessions, the walkability checklists, the surveys from Glen A. Green School, and the results of the Pelham Street traffic count all indicate that a signalized intersection is needed at this location. The Pelham Active Transportation Committee therefore urges the Pelham Town Council to adopt the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole to install traffic signals at the intersection of Pelham Street and Pancake Lane. If I may add before saying any more, uh, the data that we have is ongoing. It started in 2009, but we are updating almost monthly. And our top 10 list is changing almost uh, yearly. And uh, among the things that we are discussing, uh, it is some sort of traffic control along Pelham Street. Uh, if uh, the, uh, a light at um, Pancake Lane and Pelham Street is not uh, acceptable, some sort of control should be uh, thought of uh, in the future because of the, the increased density in the area and the number of uh, sidewalks that will, will be required to make Pelham a more walkable community. Uh, we are very, feel very strongly about this, that some sort of control is really essential. Uh, taking into consideration all the stakeholders and the things that um, uh, are and, uh, difficulty for people, it's, it's going to be ongoing and therefore we would like to see uh, your consideration uh, in regard to the intersection at Pelham and uh, Pancake Lane 
Uh, we would like to see a traffic light mm -hmm. installed there as, as soon as possible, and it may be necessary to put another traffic light in at uh, Spruce Side in the years to come. And uh, that's just the way the traffic is on Pelham Street these days. And uh, so anyway, thank you very much for my uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Swan. If you just stay there for a moment, I appreciate your presentation. There may be questions for you as well, if you're amenable to that. Do members of council have any questions for Mr. Swan? Councillor Durley and then Councillor Ribia. Thank you, Durley. Mr. Mayor. Just one through you to, to Mr. Swan. Uh, your presentation says that all of the information that you gathered, including the, the surveys and so on, indicated, and I'm quoting this part of it, indicated that residents and the parents of school-aged children want signalized crossings along Pelham Street. At any time collecting this data, were there options as to where people may prefer uh, this type of well, thing, or is it just arbitrarily picked that... that seems uh, that... The, our, our, um, uh, most of the people, most of the residents are concerned about the safety of their children in relation to Green Lake, Green Lake, Glen A. Green School. And um, even though Pancake <coughs> Lane is far, fairly far removed from the school, there are a number of issues as far as high school students are concerned. A number of children or, or students cross that intersection at Pancake Lane to wait for a school bus. And there's not a connecting sidewalk there to complete the, uh, the, um, the sidewalk network until such a time as we have some sort of control at that intersection. It's just going to be a, you know, a difficult situation for the residents to, to, to cross there. And uh, it's, it's basically we're, we're more concerned about uh, the safety of students, high school students. and, and those that have to use that, that section of, to get back and forth to Glen Agree School. Well, thank you uh, for that answer. Uh, through you again, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Swan. Uh, the volume of, of residential density in the Spruce Side area, uh, is there not the same challenges there because people living in the Woodstream and, and Spruce Side that, that uh, need to cross and those people from uh, from the east side of the road as well to, to cross is is there not uh, just as much uh, challenge to cross Pelham Street at that point as there is at Pancake? I, I agree, and I think the committee will agree as well. Um, we would just see that uh, this may be ongoing, and I think that if you don't put a light in at um, at the Pancake and, uh, and Pelham Street, then it's almost imperative that one be put in at Spruce Side for sure. So it's something that is needed, and there may be other requests in uh, months and years to come for you know more, more traffic uh, control in that area, because the speed is what we're concerned about. And unless we do something to control it, then I think we're going to have a problem as far as uh, young people are concerned, and elderly people too who do not have enough time to cross the street. And uh, so I mean, uh, this this was the one situation uh, as far as. Uh, uh, that intersection is concerned, uh, it, it's, it's something that um, uh, we would like to see uh, happen, if not at suicide, and it must be at Pancake, one, one or the other. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Councilor Ribiak? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I think some of the ground has been, been covered, but let, let me first of all thank you, uh, Mr. Swan, for your, for your presentation and your participation with the, uh, the PATC and, and indeed for PATC. What I'm gathering from what you've said is that the commitment of the Active Transportation Committee is to the notion of having pedestrian crossing on Pelham, not necessarily totally committed to one at Pancake Lane. If not one at Pancake Lane, you said, then certainly one at Spruce Side. Well, we, we would prefer to see it at Pancake, but uh, granted, uh, you know, after hearing um, the uh, former said mission earlier, uh, we, we uh, you know, we can understand that the need for maybe a change, but. Our, our principal, uh, in the intersection that we principally thought about was uh, Pancake. <coughs> if, if one is more, is, it's justifiable uh, at uh, uh, Spruce Side, well, that's, that's acceptable to us as well. Thank you. It and would be you, more acceptable if there's a connecting sidewalk. And through you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, but certainly one in one of those two locations. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. The clerk has a question as well. Yeah, uh, for Mr. Swan. Um, you're, you're asking for sing signalized um, 
control. Are you looking for a, a stoplight or just um, like a controlled crosswalk? Well, I mean, I think it's left to those that are um, uh, actually understand the situation, uh, you know, more accurately than, than us. Um, a stoplight would certainly stop the traffic. That's what we're looking for, so that people have enough time to cross the street. Mm -hmm. Students or seniors. I'm not so sure that a crosswalk is going to be a signalized crosswalk only. It's going to be acceptable. I think that we need something to control the cars. And I, whether that would be recognized uh, amongst the traveling public, the uh, cars and so on, I don't know whether that's going to be as, you can't count on that as being any, any too safe. Intersections uh, that are controlled by traffic lights are a little more safer than uh, just a, uh, a crosswalk. Okay. All right. Thank you. Others? Councillor Kersey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Mr. Swan. Um, in your collection of data, um, we talk about the pedestrians and the use of that as a crosswalking area. Do you have data that would tell us the number of people that are actually making the walk across the street at the various locations? We've looked at the traffic counts, but we've never looked at the pedestrian counts. No, well, we don't have the data. Uh, we don't have the means to do that. Um, but uh, we, we dis um, basically, we pull the residents that are affected in the area. And uh, as I mentioned in my submission, that the number of the people that we have spoken to live in the area, and they have felt uh, that you know, their secure security is at stake here. That a lot of them are having difficulty crossing from the west to the east side of uh, Pelham Street. And uh, so, anyway, that that's why it was uh, entered into the um, the uh, top ten list that we have presented each year to council, and it has been consistently on our top ten list ever since 2009. And uh, if for some reason we don't have um, the means to do that, then if a, if a pedestrian crosswalk is all that you know can be justifiable, that's the best that you can do. But we are after a stoplight, a signalized intersection, which gives people more the feeling that they, when the cars are stopped, they can go. If you just push a button and you put start walking out and the cars don't see you, accident waiting to happen. All right. Thank you. Others? Thank you very much, Mr. Swan, for your presentation and for answering the questions from councillors. And it has been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the information submitted by the Pelham Active <laughs> Transportation Committee regarding the proposed traffic signal installation at Pelham Street and Pancake Lane be received. Any further discussion? There being none, I call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you Thank very you, much. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. For information, uh, this item is under the consent block, which we'll get to in, in just a moment. So it's bear with us here. We have a meeting, a few items to get through first. Uh, the first is the adoption of minutes from our last general meeting of council, and it has been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the minutes of the following council meeting be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Regular council from February 4th, 2013. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next is um, consent agenda items to be considered in block. Are there any items of consent that uh, members of council would like to lift? Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, due to the presentations that we did receive tonight, I would like to lift item 11.1, .1, which is the resolution from the Committee of the whole meeting of February 4th, numbered 1015, uh, for uh, some further debate. Thank you. Okay, so item 1015 directly uh, related to this matter will be lifted and dealt with separately. Other items to be lifted from the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Councillor Durley read my mind. Okay. Same item. Great, thank you. Any others? So we'll deal with those. Um, we do that first or second? We do that second. Well, normally you would do the list first. Yeah. So we're going to do the block, uh, the block first, and then deal with that specific item that has been lifted. So therefore, it has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. The following consent agenda items be received and approved. 
11.1, resolutions arising from the February 4th, 2013 Committee of the Whole, save and accept resolution 1015 regarding the Pelham Street traffic signals. 11.2, minutes from the Committee of the Whole meeting of February 4th, 2013. And 11.3, information correspondence items received to February 13th, 2013 as follows. One, Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee or Council, December 18th, 2012 minutes. Two, Pelham Summerfest minutes of January 30th, 2013. Three, Niagara Region me uh, media release regarding the Economic Development Advisory Panel appointments. Four, City of Welland resolution regarding maternal, child care, and inpatient services at the Niagara Health System. Five, Epilepsy Niagara. Six, Autism raise the flag request. And seven, a thank you note from Gail Hillier. Would members of uh, council like to discuss or make comment on any of the items on the consent agenda? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, just comment on the fact that our uh, CIO was uh, successful in being appointed to the Advisory <coughs> Committee for Economic Development uh, at the region. That gives us a voice at the table and uh, I know with uh, Darren's strength in this field, uh, we'll be uh, well represented. So I'm congratulations to our CAO and thank you for taking the opportunity to uh, represent us at the table. Thank you. Thank you, Council, for having that. No doubt all of Council uh, agrees with your comments. So thank you and congratulations, Mr. CAO. Any other items under the consent agenda? There being none, then I call the question on all those matters. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is the item that Councillor Durley lifted, and it is uh, the item from uh, Pelham Street traffic signals. So it has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey, that the traffic signals installation, sorry, that traffic signals be installed at the intersection of, Pancake, of Pelham Street and Pancake Lane. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, listening to the comments that were brought forth tonight, it, it uh, I, I think opens the matter up to questions further than what we did discuss at Committee of the Whole. I asked a question that evening uh, if any of the other concerns that uh, may be present were looked at, and the answer was the only thing that we directed staff to do at the time was to do a traffic count, which uh, uh, certainly showed uh, different locations and different counts at different times of, of the month of December. However, I would like to make a motion to uh, to defer this item and refer it back to staff in, in order that uh, consideration may be given to factors that were brought forth uh, by both of our presenters tonight, uh, that being is more than one traffic signal necessary? Uh, is the topography at Pancake Lane suitable for that? Is it more suitable at Spruce Side? So on and so forth. So uh, this would have to go through, and I, I think to uh, to uh, postpone indefinitely until such time as this report can can come back. I think uh, although the PATC believes that, and I believe as well that something needs to be done, and, and quicker the better. However, it's better to do things right than have to do them over. So I think that. Uh, uh, the more information that we have before we make the decision, I think we can make a much better decision. So uh, that is my motion to defer. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. you. Is there a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Papp? <coughs> Discussion regarding that, uh, in, in, especially in terms of the instructions to staff? Councillor Papp? Uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, having listened to both presentations, the, the fact remains, as it was discussed with a couple of my colleagues, the technical analysis and the ability to come together with the understanding of what is required both along that street and notwithstanding what happens at that particular intersection and, and along the lines is definitely needed. So I would appreciate if once that uh, report comes back with that kind of technical analysis and engineering, we'll be able to understand what, what are the best uh, uh, protocols that we should be putting into place along South Pelham Road. And okay. thanks, Councillor Durley, for, for doing that. Okay. Thank you. So the debate is to, to be on why the motion should or should not be dealt with. Um, Councillor Kersey, did you want to comment as well or others? I saw your hand up there, sorry. Um, yeah, basically I, I, it's, I would refer back to an issue that I raised at the, the time when we first debated that, that we need to um, not only consider present day, but let's look at what the future needs are going to be and the impact of the traffic flow and merit. Um, I know, for example, uh, we're also in one of the other developments, there's a crosswalk being planned uh, with a 
property being deeded by the developer over to the community for a walkthrough to uh, Tanner uh, from Spruceside area and what have you. So there's some traffic issues there. So I think we, rather than let's make a decision yeah. within a little bowl, let's look at that whole strip and what our future uh, needs might be along that whole strip, say from Quaker right through to uh, Port Robinson, which is a signalized uh, intersection at the present moment. So let's look at that whole picture. Then we okay. get a better understanding. All right, thank you. Others? Councilor Riviak? The Mayor, and um, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm particularly opposed to the notion of a deferral, but I, I, I think I'm troubled a little bit by the notion that this deferral might be, as Councilor Drilly put it, indefinite. We're, we were on the verge of providing a crosswalk, signalized crosswalk or a stop sign on Pelham this evening. Putting this back into the hopper for an extended period of time, I think, might just troubles me a little bit. We were on the verge of doing something, and now we are back to uh, almost square one, I suppose. And that, 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 that I find a little troubling. I understand the need for, <clears throat> excuse me, making a, a, a proper decision particularly with regard to whether Spruce Side is more or less appropriate than, than Pancake Lane. But well, let's, let's hope it doesn't take six or eight months to get us, uh, to get us there. That, that's my only comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Durley, your response to that? Thank you. My, my reference to indefinite would, was to give staff a, an ordinary you know, time in order to, uh, to actually deal with the situation, and I appreciate your concern indefinitely is, uh, is not a good thing, so I'm suggesting perhaps the, uh, the middle of April could be a better target that gives the, uh, the whole month of March and half of April, so the meeting of <coughs> April the 15th would be about a month and a half, and I'm hoping that that could be uh, enough time for staff to take it. And I, I ask uh, through you to the CAO if, yep. if this is reasonable. Mr. CAO? Uh, <coughs> yes, Mr. Mayor, this is reasonable. Perfect. Okay, so I suggest that April 15th be the uh, be the date for the report to come back and, and uh, you know, making sure that all information is there. If, in fact, something happens that, that it isn't available, that certainly we can look at uh, delaying it for another meeting at that particular point in time. But the target being April 15th is, uh, is perhaps, you know, more reasonable and, and more uh, advisable than to use the word indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Durley. Just... Um uh, a question. Do you want it to come straight to council again or do you want it to go to committee the whole first? Uh, in think, which time it would be sort of the b meeting at the beginning of April? Uh, we have we have seen things, but again, there's going to be a lot more information coming through. So perhaps you're right that the uh, the CO, COW meeting would be best to, to hash everything out and then we can certainly uh, uh, be more efficient at the council level thank you okay so you're now proposing the first meeting in April that it come come the, back to the committee first, the whole the first COW meeting yes if, okay. if again that is that is time enough if that is good okay yes, that's, thank good. You. that's good good time okay thank you for the no, uh, insight good. into process <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you're welcome all right so we're clear on the motion which is to uh, postpone the matter until a certain time not indefinitely but to a certain time which is the first meeting of committee of the whole in April so that uh, staff can answer some of the concerns that were raised by both of the presentations this evening including whether there's a need for more than one uh, issues of topography uh, and uh, other issues that were discussed in terms of crosswalks across and we look forward to that report should this go forward any other comments questions on that I'm going to call that motion all those in favor any opposed that motion is carried or that was the amendment or no, it was, sorry, it was a deferral. So that was the entire motion is now going to be dealt with uh, then, sorry. So the motion is postponed until that time. Deferred, thank you. Thank you very much. The next item of business. So we'll look forward to that report coming back at that time. The next item of business is uh, presentation consideration of reports. I have uh, one report, and Councillor Papp has a report. It's uh, my, my report is regarding the Queen Elizabeth II uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal. Um, Council will recall uh, a few months ago when I spoke about the Diamond Jubilee Medal that was awarded by members of by Mr. Dean Allison on behalf of the uh, the Queen. Um, 
There was one recently held on Thursday, February 7th, 2013, that was presented by our Member of Provincial Parliament, Tim Hudak. And uh, he recognized individuals from across the uh, riding that we are in, Niagara West Glanbrook, uh, and 13 very, very worthy recipients. I wanted to note to Council that there were three who were such honoured from Pelham, and they included Gregory Dyson, who is a volunteer and uh, with the uh, Royal Canadian um, the Cadets, uh, Captain Lynn Giovanazzo, who is the Captain of the Cadets, and also Michael McNamara, who is uh, involved not with the Army Cadets, but with the Air Cadets, and uh, travels has travelled the province and indeed the country helping Cadet Corps, the Air Cadet Corps, uh, expand and grow. So those were honoured among other um, very, very suitable candidates from across the riding and uh, I wanted to say on behalf of Council, certainly congratulations to, the, uh, to those recipients of the Diamond Jubilee Award. Um, I believe that's the end. It's, it was to be uh, granted within the year of, uh, of the announcement. So that will likely be the end of the, uh, the Diamond Jubilee Awards. Um, but these were presented to commemorate <coughs> the 60th anniversary of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's ascension to the throne of Canada. Again, congratulations to each of the recipients, not only these three, but all who are from Pelham, and uh, thank you. That is my report. Next we have Councillor Papp. Councillor. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, very briefly, uh, Monday, February the 11th, the Chamber, Wallam Pelham Chamber held its at a monthly meeting. On board was a, a very significant presentation from Bram Cotton. He is the Executive Director of Niagara Sports Commission. And what he talked to us about is that the fact that sports tourism is the fastest growing sector of Canadian sports industry. And as a nonprofit group, they are extensively involved in a number of events throughout Niagara anywhere from the canoe and kayak to basic things like the things like the basketball tournaments that are held throughout. What we learned from him is that a lot of people don't know how much work these particular volunteers and this funded organization do and hopes that this will become part of a, a natural progression, particularly when they talk about what we're dealing with culture and all the things that are going on and what we're going to be dealing with here locally in Pelham as far as recreational facilities. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, Mr. Mayor, I will send this electronically over to you and the clerk and you can circulate it around and I think it'll be fascinating and I asked Mr. Cotton at some point if he wished it wouldn't, uh, that if he could come here and do a presentation here, I think you'd find it very fascinating the work they're doing. Um, secondly, I uh, just noted that March 23rd, Niagara College, particularly here at the Wallen campus, is holding a first open house since the final phases of construction have been completed on close to $40 million, if not more, on the particular Wallen site. And I will give you details and hope that all the community will stop by to see what has happened uh, to the Wallen campus uh, over the last uh, 18 months. And the uh, Chamber will be holding its annual uh, auction. This year it's changed. It's going to be held on a Wednesday night. And its theme, and it'll be held at Riverstone, will be a Mardi Gras theme. So that's it, Mr. Uh, Mayor, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. Thank you very much, Councillor Papp, for the update and for your ongoing service with the Chamber of Commerce. Next item is new business. We have uh, three items for new business. The first is parking improvements to the downtown. How might we results? So that's the results of the uh, creative problem-solving process that we uh, we did. I, I do have a motion here, but I believe it's very similar to the motion that we had at our, uh, at our previous meeting last week. Um, so it has been moved by Councillor Kirsty, second by Councillor Papp. The Council received the issue sheet for agenda item 16.1 regarding parking improvement to downtown, the how might we results, and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows. The Council expand the Peace Park Master Plan terms of reference in order to develop a downtown master plan. I know that uh, that's something that we approved already at our special um, special council meeting last Wednesday, and I would ask maybe the CAO to just comment on that, and uh, and then we'll hear from from council. Can you comment on that? Uh? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. The um, uh, the idea of putting the how might we report on the agenda <clears throat> for the special meeting was specific to the expansion of the terms of reference for the um, uh, Peace Park Master Plan to create a downtown master plan. 
Uh, the uh, my understanding was that there was uh, well the fact of the matter is that there is a lot of other actions that were uh, arrived upon uh, by the how might we group um, and what I have done is put together a consolidated master plan uh, list. Um, I might recommend to council that uh, you simply adopt that as uh, the master plan, a consolidated master plan, if you will, or action plan, and, and then direct staff to simply start working on implementing the various uh, recommendations that come out of the group work. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cedo. So this this portion about expanding the Peace Park Master Plan in terms of reference was already done, and what you're suggesting is the next piece, which is what we asked for at that time, which is an action plan, and is outlined in the uh, in the report here, a couple of pages of pulling all of the groups Everything together. Else, yeah. Okay, thank you. So discussion to the uh, to the process to uh, if we are going to take the CEO's advice, we should have an amendment then uh, to that effect, and we have some wording here that perhaps. You might use, but discussion to the process in general, or the actions that are outlined, councillors, or are you do you want to make that motion? I'll move the, the amendment. amendment. Move okay, the thank you. So it has been moved by Councillor uh, Kersey, second by Councillor Papp, that the uh, motion be amended uh, to strike the last piece, which has already been done, and replace it with council, and that council adopts the master action plan and directs staff to begin the implementation. Is that okay, councillors? Yeah, perfect. Okay, thank perfect. you. Discussion to that uh, to that motion. I'm gonna go ahead, councillor. I think it's self-evident after our discussions last week that the need for us to come up with a downtown master plan and how we're going to shape and form uh, not only the next five, ten, fifteen, twenty years all of the area around the downtown of uh, Font Hill, and the same sort of principle would apply to those at some point in Fenwick that it became uh, obvious to us that while we're dealing with some of these things, it was sort of uh, peace, uh, uh, part, how do I say, peace work, and we never really had any sort of overall game plan. And I'm really excited about this being done uh, in light of some other possible changes in where we go about doing zoning. These are all part and parcel of, of shaping our future, exactly what we talked about just before we convened here earlier tonight. So I look forward to this. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Others? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm only going to make one comment. I'm particularly pleased that the action plan continues to involve the various stakeholders yes. in the downtown uh, areas. Um, it's very important that we have them on board and supportive and that we take into consideration their feedback uh, because the impacts are directly on them. And uh, so their engagement is, is tantamount to success. So uh, exactly. I'm very pleased with that. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Others? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly comment uh, just to fill folks in uh, for those that may not know exactly what we're talking about. This is a, uh, the workings of a, of a group that was uh, held here. It was using the creative problem-solving process that we've used on other occasions to uh, answer the question, how might we increase or improve parking in the downtown on Thursday evenings, and how might we encourage those that are involved in the Thursday evenings, the summer at the, the um, uh, market and at the Banshell to also uh, invest or, or participate in business, invest in, the, in businesses in the downtown. Uh, a series of actions uh, occurred as a result of that, four different groups. Staff have put together a consolidated or a, or a master action plan uh, regarding this. So it does talk about a, a downtown master plan, which Councillor Papp alluded to, and Councillor Kersey, but it also speaks about things like creating a map showing parking and overflow parking, uh, making temporary signs for the Thursday night parking and having ensuring that staff set them up, um, perhaps creating new seating options in, uh, in, in the, uh, for the van shell for those that, that walk, um, define and create a unique downtown vision, identify business complements working together, benefits of, of uh, of competition and stakeholders working together, also creating a, a hub or a place to interact. So there's there's a number of um, actions uh, that are here, and uh, no doubt when some of those some of those can be done immediately, and I think there's some low hanging fruit there, like the signs. But others may have to come back to council, and no doubt staff will do that. So uh, I think it was a, a very dynamic uh, process in which we involved, as Councillor Kersey said, those stakeholders from across the community that are involved in this um, and they came up with the solutions and now council I'm very pleased uh, will endorse these uh, these actions and move forward so that being said I will call the question on the amendment 
which is adopting the master action plan and directing staff to begin the implementation. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment is carried. And now to the main motion as amended. Any further comments? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is a request for proposals for a business case. It has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Durley. The Council received the issue sheet for Agenda 16.2 regarding a request for proposal for a business case and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows. The Council authorized a request for proposal designed to solicit proposals to develop a case study for the construction and operation slash maintenance of a community recreation centre and that administration review the proposals and report back to Council with a short list of proponents and recommendations on next steps. Is there any discussion regarding this matter? self evident says Councillor Papp. <laughs> no discussion? Councillor Kersey? I'll just make a comment, Mr. Mayor. Uh, having read all the studies that have go back to 1990, um, this is a good next st step. We've studied this thing ad nauseum. It's time that we start taking some concrete steps and uh, one of the things that was lacking in most of the studies was developing a business case, exactly. both from a capital exactly. but also an operational right. side. And before we can make any concrete decisions, we need to have a look at that. So I think this is a good uh, next step and uh, I look forward to uh, receipt of the report. Thank you. Councillor Clark? Yeah, just uh, some clarity here. Um, like this evening, we're not talking about it very much, but our last meeting, we talked about this for a great deal of, of time. So just to let everyone know that we have paid attention to this. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Others? Councillor Ribiak? Yeah, just, just uh, again, to make note of an item that, that I think we discussed, as, as Councillor Clark had suggested at some length, and, and to a great extent uh, for the benefit of our own understanding, that this is a business case that will be done on the general proposition of a rec center, recreational center, cultural center, community center, without any particular definition of actually what, what it comprises. This is a business case that is going to tell us what we can afford, how we can afford it, whether we should proceed, at least from the perspective of, uh, of those numbers. So rather than think that there is a model that has already been defined and accepted, that part of the work still has to be done. But we can't go anywhere without really understanding what these numbers are. Thank you. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We, we have, as everyone has mentioned, suffered paralysis by analysis over the last number of years. So, uh, you know, I think I have to agree that it is, uh, uh, you know, time to, uh, to go forward and uh, gathering all the information that has been amassed over the years. Uh, if we can get the RFP in place and a um, certainly a business case be, be provided and sure that will give us a clear indication not only to us as council but to the community to say okay these are our needs this is what we can afford this is what we should do and and that as I heard before is a, is a terrific next step and uh, you know I think it's uh, it's now time to definitely move forward and, and make a decision thank you any others I would just like to add that uh, I, I agree with uh, the sentiment around the table um, and, and certainly that's outlined in the in the issue sheet here um, and the what's shown in the executive summary and and is outlined and I think this has been the, the issue for the community for a number of years is that the desire has been expressed and as Councillor Kersey indicated it's been there since 1990 and, and subsequent reports um, but but what has also been asked for is the the feasibility uh, the business case, those kind of things. And, and by putting together this request for proposals and, and bringing that back to Council, uh, we can get those answers that Councillor Kersey, uh, uh, sorry, Councillor Durley just spoke of. And I think that's what the community has been, been looking for as well. Um, so I'm very supportive of this. I know that we, uh, we put some money in place in the, uh, in the budget for pre-development costs uh, in the 2013 budget. And just to see if that uh, that should be there, so that there is funding for this type of thing, and um, 
I'm very encouraged by this uh, this step and look forward to uh, to the results as we continue to work on this. I think it is something as as was stated when the executive summary came out in December. Fi I'll finally say this that. Uh, that we said that we wanted to act on this, um, that it has been something that we've been talking about, talking about, talking about, and now it's, it's time to, uh, to act on this. So a little bit more study is required, just as we've asked others for uh, business cases. Uh, now's the time for us to do it, so I am very supportive as well. And uh, I've talked enough, I said about talking. Any other comments? Then I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councilor Durley, seconded by Councilor Ribiak. The Council receive issue sheet for Agenda 16.3 regarding the East Fawn Hill land appraisal and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows. The Council authorized staff to commence a request for proposals to appraise the 32 acres of land owned by the town in East Fawn Hill and to direct staff to shortlist proponents and report back to Council with recommendations regarding next steps. Comments or questions regarding this motion? You ready for the question? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Next item is presentation and consideration of bylaws. It has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey, that leave now be given to introduce the following bylaw and dispense with the reading of the bylaw, being a bylaw to appoint Catherine Hanna as Deputy Treasurer and to repeal bylaw 3225-2011. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. It has been moved by Councillor Kersey, seconded by Councillor Papp, that the following bylaw have been considered first time be numbered as follows. Bylaw 3338-2013 be now considered a second, third time and passed, and that the Mayor and Clerk do sign and seal the same, any rule of Council to the contrary, notwithstanding. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. And now uh, we do have an in-camera item, but uh, we do have some committee work to do and we have folks in the audience. So it has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Durley. The Council recess the in-camera portion of the meeting uh, and reconvene immediately following the Policy and Priorities Committee meeting scheduled for this evening. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. We'll take a brief five-minute recess and then begin committee. Uh, committee. Thank you.